Hi, this is Ricky Yates, Technical Services Manager for GGS Pro and Griffin. Today's short video is going to be on aphid control with insecticides. And a lot of you are well aware that there's some great biocontrols for aphids as well, but they'll get their own video. And anytime that we're talking about pesticides, it's really important to us that um, we emphasize the fact that although we may mention excerpts from pesticide label, it's still up to the grower to read and follow the entire pesticide label. And we also like to point out the fact that pesticide labels change fairly often. So anytime you get new product into your range, it's a good idea to read through the entire label to make note of any changes that might have occurred. As we talk about aphid control with insecticides, we still feel like at this point, we have a pretty good range of modes of action that are very effective against aphids. However, we continue to the need to be able to rotate wisely. So we're good stewards of the chemistry that we have. You'll see some of the um, items on this slide have an asterisk next to them. And that would be your indication that there's at least some edible crops on that label. In the upper left-hand corner, we're going to start with the neonicotinoids, and of course, I'm aware that there are some growers that have decided not to use them anymore, and I want to make you aware that all of those in, under 4A are neonics, um, and that's over bee safety concerns. I would like to point out that of that group, TriStar is significantly different in terms of bee safety. Foliar sprays of TriStar have been shown to be toxic to bees for around three hours, and after that, there's very little toxicity going forward, so it is possible to integrate TriStar into a program with blooming crops and preserve bee safety. I want to make sure I made that point. All of these products are, are highly effective against aphids. Um, most of them, uh, well, uh, say Flagship Marathon and Safari are very effective as drenches. And Flagship Marathon and TriStar are very effective as sprays against aphids. I do want to point out some growers have been disappointed. They sprayed Safari expecting aphid control and didn't get it. And that's, uh, that's pretty typical. So um, as a drench, it is very effective. Now, you'll see also in that first column, mode of action 4C and 4D. Now, these are not technically classified as neonicotinoids, but they have a lot in common with them, including the, re the receptor in the insect that it wor they work on. So while they're not considered neonicotinoids, um, there's a lot of things that they have in common with the neonics. Um, one thing that they don't have in common is they tend to have better bee safety than the other products that are mentioned there. And for that reason, some growers have elected to switch to those rather than using the traditional neonics. Both Expire and Altus are extremely effective against aphids, even at the low label rates. Um, Expire as a spray and Altus as a spray or drench, um, very effective against aphids. Moving over to the next column, these are what we call feeding blockers. So the mode of action is to paralyze the mouth parts of the aphid and then they're unable to, um, to get their uh, water and moisture and, and food out of the plant. So they die of starvation in about two to four days, typically. Generally, the sunnier and warmer it is, the sooner that they perish. Now, they stop feeding right away, but they're still alive for two to four days. And I point that out because um, growers, of course, when they're scouting, they like to go uh, often go out and scout the day after they make their pesticide application. And in this case, they would find the aphid still quite alive and they might be confused about the level of control. So important to give it uh, three or four days to go out there and evaluate. Uh, these all have fantastic plant safety, uh, really no issues with any of them. Um, as you can see, they all have edible crop um, labeling that's new for Endeavor in the past year. I got a, a label expansion that allows for vegetable transplants to be treated. In terms of differences between them, um, Ventigra is the newest, and you can see it's in a slightly different subclass. We would recommend that you don't rotate within the nine class, so we don't rotate nine Bs and nine Ds because they're similar enough together. We don't want to do that. And I would say backing up a little bit um, on the first column, we don't rotate between Neonix and Expire or Altus either. We're going to rotate outside of that class just to uh, be as responsible as we can with our pesticide rotations. Ventigra, um, newest of the block uh, of this group, and it does have a slightly longer residual due to some um, activity where it gets into the vascular system of the plant and moves up into new tissue for a period of time. So um, they're claiming of 21 days of control. We think that's realistic and probably 14 days for products like Endeavor and Rycar, but they're all, all great products and, and should be a part of your aphid control program. 
Moving over to Contos, um, different mode of action altogether here. Contos is effective as a spray or a drench on aphids, but there's a few things about Contos that you need to be made uh, aware of. Now, one is the fact that it doesn't take up into plants very rapidly, so foliar sprays could take up to a week to show complete control of the aphids. And drenches, no matter what pest we're going after with Contos, it takes two to three weeks typically for it to take up fully through the plant and be highly effective. So that's important when you're, uh, you may need to make an application of something else if you've got a population of aphids or thrips let's say already going to give contos the time to take up through the plant and then you get a nice long residual after that so it's worth the wait the other thing that's really important to talk about with contos is some uh, notable phytotoxicity issues there all types of geraniums are damaged by contos and it, um, it's very difficult for the plants to ever outgrow it would be pretty much a loss if that happens it also is damaging to dracaena and cordyline so make sure you take a look at that the phytotoxicity caution on the label of contos and, and heed that but a good product and very long residual and um, vegetable transplants on the label as a spray so lots lots to like about contos uh, next is mode of action 28 now mainspring has uh, really kind of taken our industry by storm has been very popular for all the right reasons when it comes to aphid control a little interesting there it does not have particularly good control as a spray but is highly effective as a drench i had one easter lily grower that felt like they got almost eight weeks of control from a single drench of mainspring at the eight ounce per hundred gallon rate so we know as a drench it's highly effective against aphids um, as a foliar spray really that's not something we recommend and Prati is relatively new to this space. It does contain a mode of action 28 um, insecticide as well as a mode of action 29, which is flonicamid, the active ingredient aria, which is just in the column to the right, which used to be classified over in, in the nines with the other feeding blockers, but to more recently has been given a different designation there. We've had very good early uh, reports on Prati, not only as an aphid product, but it's a very broad spectrum insecticide picking up other insect pests as well. As well. It's only labels as a foliar spray so in this space if you're going to drench mainspring is a great option if you want to spray you have two options there so all these products have um, a really good plant safety i will say that there is known issues for pansies and violas with paradia and distorted um, foliage there so be aware of that but other than that these two products have been really bulletproof when it comes to plant safety in Ari, as I mentioned, you can buy that product standalone there. Um, it's uh, an aphid product. It does pick up a couple of ins other insects as well. So that's another another good option for you to have. As you can all on the bottom of the screen, these are um, uh, insecticides that don't have a classification there, a UN classification. And um, all of these are microbial insecticides. And our feeling just working with growers over the years is that they're really stronger against thrips and white flies uh, than they are aphids, but they certainly can be used for aphid control. Um, there seems to be an advantage uh, in efficacy if they're tank mixed with an acetoractin based insect growth regulator. And these would be products such as Azotino and um, Azagar and um, Moltex or some other good products out there. And the tank mix of those are very effective. And when we produce a, a video on thrips, we'll spend a little bit more time talking about using microbial insecticides and how to use them for best effect. A lot of times growers say that they have really no issue controlling aphids or other insects while they're hanging baskets or down on benches or um, are grown on the ground for the first four or five weeks. But when they get hung up, they're hard to scout, they're hard to spray and um, putting them up in the, the warmer, sunnier part of the greenhouse, the aphids reproduce even more rapidly. So they're looking for long-term drenches for aphid control. And you can see here, now it might be a surprise to you that Endeavor's on this list. Um, Endeavor's label expansion allows now for a drench on ornamentals for aphid control. And we've seen about five weeks of control from the five ounce per hundred gallon rate. So that gives you another great option out there. You will, might also notice that I didn't, I put um, the Neonix, the flagship and Safari on the same line with Altus. And I did that just to remind us not to rotate between those modes of action. And uh, with the proliferation of vegetable transplants that have uh, occurred with so much more popularity of, of vegetable production in greenhouses in the last few years, um, it's good to talk about the fact that we have some really good options for transplant sprays there. Again, Altus, I think, is uh, really stands out in this group. It's, um, it's extremely effective against aphids at a low rate and has a very broad label, not only for vegetable transplants, but even some vegetables grown on to harvest. Um, but you can see you've got a lot of good options there. 
there. Just make sure we're not rotating in the same um, same space. And uh, again, your microbial products. And there's one that I didn't mention previously, and that's Venerate CG. And um, that is an interesting microbial product. We don't have as much experience with it, but it has a very broad label on it, and it looks promising to us. So I want to make sure that I mentioned it. Really appreciate you uh, tuning in and, and watching this video. And if you have any additional questions that maybe were spurred by this uh, video, feel free to contact us either by email or by our phone number. And if you have any um, suggestions for future videos, topics you'd like to see covered, we'd love to hear that as well. Thanks again.